Hello, my name's Catherine Scott and thank you for stopping by to hear about my book Destiny Calling. I've been a freelance writer for about five years now and as any writer will know, during that time I've had to do a lot of different jobs to support myself. Those jobs have included office work, private tutoring, but the job that inspired this book was when I worked as a carer for people with spinal cord injuries. In my work I saw lots of different ways of dealing with a spinal cord injury and being in a wheelchair. Some people were extremely angry and sad about their situation. Others were very positive. I noticed that how people coped with being in a wheelchair depended a lot on the people they had around them. That's why the focus of Destiny Calling is not on Beth's dad, even though he's the one with a disability, but on 10-year-old Beth. Beth has never stopped loving her dad, but she has found him being in a wheelchair very hard to handle. I grabbed the towel and started drying dad's hair, standing behind him. Dad's got this thick hair that you think will never dry, but then you rub it hard enough and suddenly it magically looks like it was never wet. It's sort of a middle brown colour with bits of grey in it. Hey, ease up, will you? Dad suddenly said. I lowered the towel and looked round at him. He was laughing at me. You're rubbing so hard my head's going to come off. Oh, sorry. I rubbed more gently. OK, you're dry enough, I decided. I am, am I? Dad seemed amused. I went to put the towel back on the rail, rather than leaving it scrunched up in a corner, which Mum always shouts at Jez for doing, but Dad put his hand on my arm. Are you alright, Beth? I didn't look at him. I didn't want to lie, but I didn't want him to see how excited and nervous and scared I was, and all because I had the chance to make his legs better. Yeah, I'm alright, Dad. Just excited about going to London. Of course, that's today, isn't it? Oh, you'll love it, sweetheart, Dad said. I wish I could come with you. He started wheeling his way out of the bathroom. I opened the door for him, and when he'd gone far enough down the hall that he wouldn't hear me, I whispered, You will, Dad. One day you'll come to London with me. Walking. It's the arrival of Destiny, a new girl in Beth's class at school, that helps to bring Beth out of her shell. Until now, Beth has been afraid to bring any friends home from school because she fears whispers, stares and questions about her dad's wheelchair. Then Destiny sweeps into her life in a cloud of frizzy hair, chatter and enthusiasm and she shows Beth that a real friend will take her and her family just the way they are. The room got really loud when they let all the audience come in and there was lots of shouting and laughter and the people with clipboards made the audience practice cheering and clapping. I didn't really understand why they needed to practice those things because they're quite easy really. The clapping got louder and the lights got hotter when the four judges came in. There were two pretty ladies in dresses and two older men, one who looked a bit like he had gravy on his face because he was so brown. Suddenly, I started to feel a bit ill. I went and sat on a box and put my head in my hands. Destiny ran over to me. You okay, Beth? I don't know about this, Des, I mumbled. I feel sick. I feel awful. I want to go home. I looked guiltily up at her through my hair. I'm sorry. Destiny kneeled down beside me and looked me in the eyes. I think you're just scared, Beth. I nodded. I am. I'm too scared. I can't do it. Beth, you're cleverer than anyone I know. You can do anything, she told me, taking my hand. You're my best friend. Tears came to my eyes then. I'd wanted to hear those words for so long. It had been so lonely in school before Destiny came. Then everything got brighter. Looking at the pink sparkles of her dress through my tears, I realised that was exactly what she did. She made everything sparkle. I think that my book, Destiny Calling, will probably appeal to readers between the ages of 8 and 12 and may also appeal to older teens and adult readers who enjoy children's books with a difference. I know that, as an adult, I still regularly revisit books from my childhood and my writing owes a great deal to the influence of authors such as Morris Gleitzman and Judy Bloom. I hope you like the sound of Destiny Calling and will support it. Thank you.